for me, I will say that as I got older and I found uh, the goddess, I think that was probably my saving grace, was when I was introduced uh, by, um, uh, what's his name, Scott Cunningham's book, Wicca for the Pre Solitary Practitioner. I was like, oh, thank goodness, there's a female god. I can relate to that. You know, I, I don't like this mean, angry, you know, I'm going to smite you, biblical Jehovah dude, you know. He was scary. You know, yeah. I'm like, I just, and that was the other thing. I just didn't relate to that. Uh, I had a compulsion to go to church. Yes, I went to church every morning at 6.30 a.m. I would go to chapel before I went to school. I had a compulsion to be around it. I had a compulsion to understand it. But um, I never really aligned with it. It was never something that I could sink my teeth into, for lack of a better term. But I will say that as I progressed and went into the whole uh, pagan thing, I was like, oh, this is much better. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't. I'm like, yeah, they almost got it. You know? <laughs> yeah, they almost got it. But it, it's, it, I'm not getting it. I, uh, there, it's funny that... Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm sadly, I lost the, the the manuscript, but I had actually started writing a book in my teens and twenties about uh, a spirit or a soul incarnating on the earth and uh, taking up with the pagans to fit in. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really it's funny because as I wrote that, I was very, very much into the pagan movement. I was totally into it. I was okay with it. But now looking back, I'm like, yeah, I kind of did just, you know, wanted to find someone I could relate to. And they were the closest thing to what I understood. But, you know, as we get older, we're like, yeah, no, it doesn't work for me. But um, so that's that. And, you know, again, I just wanted to share some experiences to let people understand what, uh, what they could have been feeling was real. Uh, we We really have the ability to... And, and many of us will go through uh, a regression sometimes to remember these memories. But uh, most likely, if you are feeling that pull, if you are feeling that that calling to to being a light worker, or you feel that you that you are psychic and you're aware of it, you know it, it's very difficult when you have the entire world around you telling you that no, it's not real, or worse yet, that it's evil. And, uh, yes, of course, it, things can be used for evil. Every, it, it, the body, and I don't want to get too much into it yet, but the body, the energetic body, the energetic field, energy does not know the difference between good or bad. It just is. And the way that we direct that energy is what motivates uh, us to call something positive or negative or good or evil. Uh, to simplify it, it's uh, and I'm just going to simplify it now, and I'll get into it deeper in a few minutes. So is it service to the self or service to others? And that's kind of a really easy way of, of telling if you're if you're doing dark magic or anything. But um, uh, that's the other thing is that uh, we have we have ultimate ultimate power over our lives. And what happens is, as a light worker, and as we're developing as light workers, we're going to get it. We're going to get a lot of gifts from the universe to remind us of the beauty of our ability. We are going to have the uh, the luck, and some people call it luck, but it's not luck. It's almost we yes we have free will, but it's almost destiny to meet abundance. Yes, the abundance of of people that we need to have in our life at that particular moment. So as we begin to move into the understanding of being a light worker, as we begin to move into the understanding of 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 the universe, of understanding energy, of understanding the energetic body, we have that 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 abundance of clarity if we so choose to have it. Uh one of the greatest uh situations including for myself is not trusting our intuition. Not trusting our eyes, not trusting our ears. Um, a very good example is the disinformation that is out there, the, the disinformation that tells you, no, there are no lines in the sky, no, your water's not poisoned, you know, no, that's not violence on TV, that's a cartoon, or, you know, no, that's just, that's not murder, it's a war game, it's only PlayStation. You know, yeah. Meanwhile, your gut is telling you you're, you're still doing the act, the energy. You're still doing the intention. And uh, your gut is right. 
never mm-hmm. ever deny yourself that yeah. you know we have this this sense that you know we need to fit in and uh, you know that's one of the things I, I'd like to say in, in, in a comical sense is that I wish I knew now what I knew then or vice versa I should say because if we would have the clarity and I know it's just a part of the aging process but many uh, indigos and many um, crystals and light workers and rainbow children never really gave in to that whole peer pressure media pressure societal pressure they just were quiet and whatnot. I gave in. I unfortunately got called into, you know, the whole cool dude, you know, the whole, I wanted to be cool. And I was cool till you know, my mid-30s, for lack of a better, unfortunately, I'm not going to say for lack of a better term, but, you know, we wanted to be cool. We wanted to fit in. We wanted to be the most popular. We wanted to, to dress the coolest and look the coolest. Meanwhile, we're offending Everyone making them feel uncomfortable, making ourselves feel uncomfortable, making ourselves feel sick many times, especially if you're involved in the whole drug scene. Um, and uh, we just don't get – we didn't get it. So I think it's wonderful when we're seeing a lot of the younger people today, the crystals and the rainbow children, you know, they call them geeks or whatever. I, I would love to have been a geek. And I was a geek, except I was a cool geek. That was my mistake. I should have stayed with the geeks. But <laughs> it, was, it wasn't a mistake. You have to learn things, don't you, to be where you are now. You can't appreciate all these lovely people that you help at the moment. If you hadn't been there to see how they feel, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I agree. Friends. Looking back, I must say that I do agree with that, and it was great fun. And the experiences <laughs> that I had, I, I, you know, I wonder, and I'm not sure that I have ever answered this question uh, to myself, quite honestly. Not only to myself, but uh, in general, as far as light working and reincarnation and whatnot. One of the driving factors for me to be a cool kid was that my mind or my intuition and I guess maybe you're right it is a part of my path because my mind kept telling me I want to experience everything while I'm young and I'm in this body I want to do everything I want to experience everything I want to try every drug try every sexual thing you know whatever the things you do when you're 20 years old you know I want to I want to bungee jump I want to parachute I want I didn't get to do the parachuting but I got to do everything else you know (laughs) I want to travel I want to see everything I wanted to experience everything because I was in the body and a lot of that it probably has to do with the fact that you know we are aware that we are souls within a physical form and as souls within a physical form we're like wow this is great you know what can I do with this machine so yeah I can I can I can forgive my, my inappropriateness as a youth to that of, yes, okay, I got to do it. I got to, you yeah. know, live the high Let life, the low system. life. Yeah, exactly, exactly.